Welcome back to Catalan Soccer, guys, the ultimate channel for soccer coaching tips and strategies. Today, we're going to be looking at how to manage difficult behavior in your sessions. So let's get straight into the video to give you top tips on how to do it. Now, coaching kids is not just about developing skills, but it's about developing their character, their confidence, and their sportsmanship, as well as trying to develop what they do with their feet. So in today's video, we're going to help you not only plan your sessions, but also some really good behaviors to show the kids to try and get them to emulate your behavior as a coach to try and behave better in your classes. This should really help you if you're struggling to manage behavior in your sessions. Strategy number one is to set clear expectations for the session. Now I've got to stress that you've got to set clear expectations at the start of every single session, at least until kids start to show you the right behaviors, but never take it for granted that they will just know what the expectations are because you discussed them two or three weeks ago. So every single session, set expectations for exactly what you want from the session and exactly what you expect them to do in the session too. These expectations can be things like around attitude, discipline and respect, but also in regards to listening, paying attention and staying focused in the class. By reinforcing these expectations at the start of the session, you are asking every kid to make you a promise that they're going to try and stick to these expectations as the session goes on. Strategy number two is to set a structured routine. Now kids thrive in structured routines, which is why it's very important to create a routine that will run throughout your sessions over a set period of time. Try and establish a routine with consistent warm-ups and consistent drills that will build some regularity and rhythm to how the kids learn. I'm not saying to do the same thing in every single session, but you do need to have a set structure and a set format for how your session will run every single week. This will help kids to stay focused because they know what's coming next and it helps the session be more predictable, which means that the kids are more likely to be focused on their task. For example, you could start every single session with ball mastery work, but that ball mastery itself is going to change from week to week but it's always the same start to the session so the kids know what to expect when they arrive. And when they do arrive, make sure that you're engaging the kids, telling them exactly what we're going to be going through today, giving them a few examples, and even let them try some of the stuff before the session starts to get a head start. This all comes down to the planning of your session to make sure you have a structured timeline throughout your session for what's going to happen and when. And then your job as a coach is to try and stick to that timeline as close as you can to keep that regularity. That structure and discipline will really help kids stay focused in the session. Strategy number three is to set simple rules for your session with consequences if those rules are broken. Now these rules should be age appropriate and should promote things like teamwork and fair play and respect. You also then need to outline what the consequences are for breaking those rules with things such as a loss of privileges, a conversation with a parent, or maybe even having to sit kids out of a session, which I personally don't like doing, but sometimes it can be the final straw if you're losing the attention of the group because of certain lack of discipline or behavior from players. Now, when you mention these consequences to the players, again, you are getting the whole group to make a deal with you that they are going to meet the rules and expectations and that these are the consequences that we all agree to if things aren't met. Now, when you do that, it makes it very simple when you need to then instill a consequence in the session because you're saying to the whole group, guys, didn't we discuss that this would be the consequence if that happened? And when they all agree, then there's no arguing, there's no fight back. The kid understands that they're gonna to have to suffer the consequence because they know that they broke the rule that everybody agreed to. Tip number four, this strategy is all about positive reinforcement, finding good role models in your session that are doing the right things and rewarding them, complimenting them, and making sure you draw attention to the kids that are doing things the correct way, the way you want them to be done. So praise children when they demonstrate positive effort and attitude or any kind of sportsmanship. That positive role model will hopefully rub off on the other kids where they will start to emulate them because they want your positive praise as well. That positive reinforcement fosters self-confidence and will hopefully encourage kids to behave well and follow the simple rules that you've set to make sure that they stay on your good side and they keep getting that positive praise. Strategy number five is knowing how to redirect and engage children. Instead of dwelling on negative behavior, try and redirect their attention towards a more structured drill or trying to keep them focused by shifting their attention to doing something new and something exciting. Sometimes if you're losing their attention and you're losing their behavior, it's because things have been going on too long. So keep changing the game on them to keep them focused. Often kids will start to act up because they don't feel like they're responsible for anything within the session. So give them a role, give them a job to do, whether that's collecting cones for you or serving balls, 
but by giving them an actual job and responsibility, you are more likely to keep them behaving. Strategy number six is to keep clear lines of communication with your players. So listen to their problems, listen to their frustrations, and anything that they feed back to you in the session, don't be too proud. If they're begging for match time, give them more match time. Now, obviously that match time is going to be structured and it's going to be on your terms, not theirs. But if kids are constantly asking for something or acting up when you're doing a particular drill or activity, then maybe that that's not the drill for them. Maybe you need to change the game and listen to that feedback, but make sure that you're keeping those clear lines of communication where you're actively listening to what the kids want and that will help you keep them on task and behaving. Remember, our role as coaches is not just to develop soccer players, it's to develop likable, good sportsmen who want to make sure that they're trying their best in everything that they do, not just on the football field. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed that video. And now it's time to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. We'll see you in the next one.